Hey folks, this is Johnny. Welcome to my studio tour 2024. And I do have to admit this was inspired by the awesome studio tour that uh, Johnny Lipsham did. Um, I have a little bit bigger of a space, so this video might be a little bit longer. So uh, stay tuned for everything from musical equipment and instruments to Godzilla and Batman stuff. <laughs> I'll get to those in a few minutes. All right, so this is the main console here. This entire console is run by my Mac Mini M1 with only 8 gig of RAM. Yeah, go figure. And it does everything that I needed to do. At the bottom is my old school gear, a couple of uh, a DAT player, a dual cassette uh, player, uh, plus a turntable, because I do transfer some of my vinyl uh, to Studio One sometimes for like uh, ma mi matching mixes. Let's see if I can say that right. And uh, that is the uh, Tumblr subwoofer right there. This test is actually adjustable. It raises up and down. Uh, if I want to stand at the desk, I can raise it up to stand, or I can just leave it where it's at to sit. All right, so let's go through some of the gear here. There's some classic stuff here, and of course some newer stuff. Everybody knows that I went from the Studio Live Mixer, which I still have, by the way. I went from the Studio Live Mixer to a basic interface and extender setup with my Fadeport 16. All right, so if we start over here, I have a very old school Roland sound canvas, and I actually use this a lot for the organ sounds that are in it. And, and here is my Johnson J station, <laughs> or should I say my nearsighted Johnson J station. It's where I put my glasses too. Um, and I use this for some of the guitar parts. I uh, didn't use this on the latest song that I released with my voice improving just enough to sing a little bit. But um, I use that for some background guitar sounds. It's not as bright as some of the plugins, so it makes really good background guitar sounds. All right, if I move over this way, my fader port 16. And I had in my supply closet, I had a magnetic USB port that actually grips onto the fader port really well. And it lets me put these two lights because the keyboard that I use does not light up. So I needed a light if I was gonna operate in the dark. All right, as we go further this way, my Adam. I couldn't live without that for doing some of the drum parts and the uh, fills that I do. And then I have an iPad sitting right here, which actually holds a version of the, um, the uh, let's see, hold on, let me get, actually go back. Let me open it. I'll show you. You see Surface. And what this does is this can control either my 1824 or my Revelator. So I'm going to go to the 1824. So this is identical to having one of the uh, Studio Live mixers. So I can control all of the inputs to my 1824, which is over here. I can control all of those inputs and balance levels for the actual interface itself from here. So now if we move over here, we can see here is my Revelator. Now this is actually kind of cool because I didn't like the desktop stand that it came with. So I adapted it so that I could actually use it for tracking. I use this for guitar sometimes. And if you can see this crazy customized, it's just a... A piece of wood that I painted black <laughs> and I drilled the holes in it and mounted it to this microphone boom, ar uh, boom arm and it makes it really nice. I can actually bring it quite low and I can tilt it up or down if I want to. So it makes a nice little addition to my microphones. And speaking of microphones, this microphone I use for everything. This is the Personas PD70. It is a great all-around microphone. I can use it for vocals, and I used it on the vocal that I did for the latest song that I put out there. And uh, I use it for my acoustic guitars especially. And most of the time, I don't need to really EQ anything I put into it. I just add a little bit of compression. All right, so now, this little guy here, this is an interface uh, that I have... 
working along with the 1824. And what this one does, this is strictly for OBS. And you can see, I am still at a point in my life where I am not using the loop back because the loop back for the 1824 is not available on the Mac. I don't know why, but it isn't. So I actually plug uh, a set of outputs into the inputs on this little guy. And what he does is he feeds OBS. So when I do my videos, everybody can hear everything from my instruments uh, to my voice all at the same time. And I balance it all out there. All right, on the racks, here is the old school side. I have my Proteus Custom, I have my Alesis S4, and my Alesis DM5 drum module. I use these more than you think I would. <laughs> um, it actually, they actually work beautifully. They all plug in the MIDI ins and outs, plug in to this MIDI Plus unit, and uh, it also, uh, the MIDI Plus also takes a signal from my V-Drum kit, which I'll show you here in a second. Oh, and I have some Batman toys right here. <laughs> I'm a child, what do you want? All right, so uh, that is that for that side of the rack. Now on this side of the rack, I have my HP60 for all my headphone mixing. I have my 1824 for all of my main inputs. And then I have a really old Digimax D8, which is eight more inputs to take the, um, to actually uh, take the outputs of all my old school gear, plus my turntable and the uh, two uh, tape units. They all plug into there, or they all plug into the patch bay, and then I use the patch bay to actually get the signals into Studio One. It was easier with the mixer, but I like this form factor a little bit better. All right, so the upper shelf. I told you this was going to be long. I am using the uh, Prusonis. Uh, these are the Aris 44s. I love these. There is one thing to remember if you're using the Aris 44s is that you uh, cannot put them sideways. They sound, I don't know, they, to me, they sound terrible sideways. All right, then I have on the shelf, I have an HP4, which is really awesome. It's a secondary module that actually powers the speakers coming out of the main outs of the um, 1824. Next to it, or on top of it, I have, <laughs> it's an old school floppy drive uh, from a really, really old Mac. And yes, I do have some discs that I actually have to access from time to time. Has some of my old pictures from back in the 80s and 90s. But I do use that. And then I got a nice little um, uh, Bluetooth speaker. And that's where my camera sits. So now over here, there's my CD player. There's a really old cell phone that I'm actually fixing. And there is my Alexa unit. Very, very cool. And then I have my guitar lights. Here's one, and here's the other. And then I have these light bars that I got on Amazon that I really like when I'm actually playing music. Uh, they actually help me keep a consistent level in my room. They're nothing accurate, they're nothing fancy, but they help me keep a consistent level in my room when I'm mixing. And I know that if the light bar lights up too much, I've got the music too loud. So it's kind of a rudimentary way to control that. And up above, I have mounted to my console, I have mounted two lamps. That one and that one. And the cool thing about these lamps is, see if I can get it to light up now. There we go. I can actually move, um, I'm trying to say the word mood. There we go. Mood light the room. So I can change it to red. I can change it to blue and so on. So it really gives me a lot of control over the, the way the room feels when I'm mixing. So there you go. So now I've got two monitors hooked up here. I've got a uh, regular flat screen right here for my main uh, control of Studio One. 
And then I have a curved monitor up here. And sometimes I actually have a movie going on up there if I'm actually doing some editing and I want something in the background. But that is my secondary monitor when I'm mixing. Very cool. So now, that is pretty much the main console. So now if we go over here, this is my office area. <laughs> I got an old iPad right there. Oh, my uh, lava lamp went off. And it's not really a lava lamp. It's one of those glitter lamps because my lava lamp hit the floor. And uh, <laughs> couldn't get it fixed again. Uh, yeah, just a printer. And here is a guitar I got from my father after he passed. I got it from the estate, and uh, it is a Randy Jackson, a real El Cheapo guitar, but it's got a great pickup in it and a tuner. And I got the amp that actually goes with it as well. There's some CDs right there, and then over here is my pride and joy, my V-Drum kit, which is a kit that I custom built. Um, it's all Roland pads. It is a, let's see who makes it, ah, the cage is from a Tama kit, and I customized it to actually hold all of the pads using a TD3 for the brain, which has a 100 foot, yes, 100 foot MIDI cable going from there to the input on my MIDI Plus. And if you're wondering if that's true, you can see the 100-foot mini cable wound up right there. And you would think there would be a lot of latency, and there really isn't. There really isn't at all. And then I got this light here that I can, uh, when I play the drums, it changes color. Yeah, because I'm just silly that way. And this is my medicine cabinet. And this over here is a place where I keep all of my sample CDs. These are sound effects and all sorts of Foley sounds. It's pretty amazing. The stuff that I've collected over the years, it's just crazy. All right, and then uh, that, is a, an, that is an M-Audio microphone. It is really old. It's one of the first microphones I ever bought. I don't really use it that much, but I keep it as a spare just in case. And here is a 19, I think I bought this roughly 1990 it is a fender squire and it is my main electric guitar it is, it is beautiful I, I love the way it sounds the action is super low on it and it's really easy to play and then there's this guitar that i got from my father it is i believe that says epiphone and it doesn't have a whammy bar because i like to do my whammy bar stuff not that I'm a great guitar player, but um, this guitar is, it stays in tune forever. I, I rarely have to tune this. And again, I got that from my dad's estate along with his Randy Jackson over there. And then next to it is my childish part. It's uh, some of my Batman toys. I have all of the Batmobile vehicles. Batmobile vehicles, if I said that right. And, of course, I have to have a Mach 5. I found that at Walmart, and I had to buy it. It's even got the saws that pop out of the bottom. <laughs> and then these are my bat. Just This is just a portion of the Batman figures that I have. Got this huge three-footer right there. And that is the uh, Christopher Nolan Batman. And then there is... Netflix Batman and then Batmite. <laughs> it's actually a piggy bank, along with that being a bat. That's Bat Pig. And then just some other assorted uh, Batman figures. I've even got the Batman figure uh, in there somewhere. I think he's in the back there. And then <laughs> to top off my childish uh, childishness, I can't remember, and I so much apologize who sent me this. It was gifted to me from one of my home studio trainer fans, and he sent me a Batman guitar, which I have almost completely fixed up. The action is actually still pretty good. It's got some mileage on it, and it's missing a knob, but I replaced some of the electronics in there, and I have actually got it to work, but it buzzes like crazy. So that's my Batman guitar. And then, of course... Since I work nights, 
my wife and I during the week sleep in separate areas. She has the bedroom upstairs and I have my bed down here because my work computer is right there. I work from home, but I sleep down here during the week. So that's my bad bed. <laughs> and then something that Johnny was actually talking about in his video, he didn't have a place for all of his wires and cables. This is just one section that I have a ton of wires and cables on. Plus all of my little guitar parts. Just like that. And I got my fan and I got my noisemaker. And across the top, I have a couple of percussion instruments, the ones that I use the most. Just up there. And there's a corner light. You can see that the area above the console is soundproofed. And the area in back, I've used, I had really bad flutter echo. And I tried to put these bass traps along the corners. But it's I still couldn't get rid of the sound. So just out of sheer, sheer having, not having any other um, options, I put them up there. And sure enough, the flutter echo went away. All right. So that is room number one. And this is where I do all of my main work. All right. So room number two, and, and it looks bigger in video than it actually is. This room is only nine feet by nine feet. All right. Let's go into the other room. This, uh, yeah, we ran out of storage, so I had to put that stuff there. But this is my son's workout area. And since he is into security, uh, we have a couple of vests in here that he wears on some of his jobs. And a punching bag. When I really piss him off and uh, when, I, when I don't want him to punch me, he uses that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. My son and I don't fight at all. Thank, thankfully, he'd kill me. All right, so you can see I got some of the artwork from my kids when they were little. Here's a picture of me and my brother and my first dog right there. Look at that. I think I was, what, six years old? No, no, he's older. So, yeah, I would have to be almost 10 because I think he's close to five right there. And there is an award that my daughter received. She wanted me to hang in my studio. And now... For the other childish section, I have my Godzilla collection. Now, I would love to actually say that these are toys that I had as a kid. Oh, we couldn't afford toys like this when I was a kid. So, so as soon as I grew up, I went out and I bought them all. I know I don't have all of them, but it is a big collection. There's all my Godzilla movies and Gamera and all sorts of stuff. I've even got a couple of the toys from the newer movie. There's Kong and Godzilla US and Shin Godzilla and just everything. Just like that. Pretty cool. I'm very, very proud of my toy collection. All right, there's some birthday cards from my family and yes, this is a Batman jacket, and yes, I can wear it now. After losing about 35 pounds now, I can finally fit into it again. All right, as far as music goes, this is my PC section. This is where I do most of my training, because most of my clients are PC-based, uh, especially some of the older clients that I have. And I have a whole group of people that I teach that are 50 and older. And most of them are on PC. I got a couple that are on the Mac, but I needed to actually come up with a, um, I needed to come up with an option for the PC folks so that when I actually showed them stuff, they would be able to uh, follow along easier. So on this rig, I've actually got the uh, IO station 24C. I've got the, um, the Personas, uh, Eris 3.5s. I have an audio box go that's hooked up, but I don't use it for this rig. And then I have a little camera. I have the mic. And then I have this for the keyboard here, my Akai P, um, MPK Mini. 
and the PC is down there. And I have an on-air sign that changes colors. And then the lights that I actually use to actually light up the room. Oh, there's my Beatles CDs. All right, so over here is my kitchen. <laughs> oh, I put my drink up here. I was going to take that down. So this is my kitchen. Uh, when I'm actually down here at night, I don't like waking up the rest of the family because my dinner time is like midnight, one in the morning. And I use this to actually cook my food. I got a nice big fridge right there. Excuse me, as I take a drink. And over here, oh, this is the, oh, I got to show you guys this. I didn't even think to show you guys that. This is my turntable area. Here's my son's video games, TV, tons of videos that we probably don't even watch anymore because everything's online. This whole rack here on this side is all my Beatle albums as uh, this part has the rest of my Beatle albums plus my Everly Brothers. And then the rest of it is really just uh, random stuff that I've collected over the years. And I have a little Bose system that was gifted to me from a friend of mine who is in a, an assisted living facility now. And he gave me his little Bose system. It's pretty cool. Oh, and you can see before I started this, I was playing the Beatles Love Songs album. There's some Beatles stuff right there. A guitar lamp and a Spider-Man head. And my Charlie Brown Christmas tree. <laughs> it's about all I do to decorate my studio. All right, so before I get to the sound room, I wasn't going to show this, but I think I can. Uh, there is just a ton of stuff. Now, a lot of this stuff is stuff that I've collected uh, when I was younger. This is my Batman wall right here. I've got the Bat Shield. Now, it's so funny. I paid 80 bucks for that. <laughs> yeah, you wonder why I'm broke. Um, I paid 80 bucks for that thinking it was a full size. So I was wrong. And there is uh, a lot of this stuff is stuff that uh, my friends and family have given me over the years for Christmas. There's the Adam West Batman. Cesar Romero Joker. And Robin right there. And this is a bat that my son did for me in his medals class. They actually used uh, torches to actually cut this out on some sort of a machine where you put in a pattern. Let me take this off here. And he made that for me. It is freaking awesome. Oh, and there's a the Riddler. And <laughs> yes, I have an abacus. And there's Spidey. Okay, so now up this way, as I go up the stairs here, up this way is more stuff that I've gotten over the last bunch of Christmases. And this wall is all of the projects that I've done over the years for clients and songs that I've helped with, CDs that I've produced. Most of this stuff was done pre-2005 when I had a Roland VS2480 in the studio. There is my keytar. I'll just do a quick sweep of this. Yes, I have batarangs. Godzilla. It's pictures of my old studios from my dad's house in our old apartment. That is my Beatles wall. This has all of the Beatles CDs and stuff that I can't find anymore. Just like that. And this I got from my dad. These are the Elvis Presley commemoration sing, uh, singles from the Sun label. I've never taken these out and I've never played them. Some pictures of uh, some clients that I've had in here. No, I didn't have John Lennon as a client, but I got this picture. And then, I hate to admit it, but yes, I can play the accordion a little. All right, so that takes care of my staircase. 
It was on my 45s. Look at that. All right, we're working on 24, almost 25 minutes. So let me do a quick tour of my sound room. Now this room is only nine by five. So it's really, really small. It's like uh, five and a half. So let me quickly go through some of this stuff. I have this mic, and of course, its cable runs into the main room. I have my percussion set up here. I have an 88 key piano. This is just a Casio. Really simple. And uh, there's a microphone stand here with just Personas mics. I'm a big fan of the M7 microphones. And I use them for a lot of stuff. Now behind the curtains is my storage. And I will not, well, I'll give you a peek. So see, it's crap. <laughs> so I put up these blackout curtains so that I could change the size of the room. All right, there's the bells that my daughter uses and my chimes. And this is my daughter's drum kit, her acoustic drum kit. We're getting ready to sell it. It's a trap kit. Doesn't sound great, but it was perfect for testing uh, microphones and for her to practice for band when she was doing her jazz band stuff. She has since graduated, so we're going to figure out what to do with this. All right, then, uh, the microphones for this drum kit, yes, believe it or not, uh, they go into this old Roland VS-880 EX. Yes, I still use it, believe it or not. And up here, more percussion. And my other cable wall. Very cool. Oh, and one more thing. To know that you're doing well and you're a good musician, the best teachers in the world are the Beatles. It's, it's cool to have them up there, but it's kind of horrific because they have these giant nails going through their necks. <laughs> it was the only way I could think to get them up there. I couldn't put a shelf up there, but, um, Anybody that comes to the studio and we use this for their vocals, they love seeing these up here. And I had one guy tell me that it was very inspirational <laughs> to have the Beals watching him from above. Very cool. There's my daughter's acoustic guitar. It looks black, but if you look close, it is a gorgeous kind of a marble blue. And then I have a couple of control surfaces back here and that is my sound room. I have the window there, but I can't use the window because the monitors on the other side are actually blocking it. So I just went ahead and uh, this is a picture from my dad's house. I love this with the giant cat, ebony and ivory. Isn't that gorgeous? And folks, that is it. I have never done a full basement studio tour before. Now, believe it or not, this is the stuff that is left over from the uh, equipment that I had to sell. And as time goes on, depending on how things work out this year, I might be selling one of these setups uh, because I might have to uh, bring us uh, stuff from a storage space down, so I may lose one of these rooms, but I hope not. I hope not. And I can close this right here now. There we go, just like that. But that's it. That's it. Tell me what you guys think. Leave some comments. Uh, if you have any questions about how I run things, how I have things wired, I would actually be happy to show you. And no, I don't play with the toys. But you want to know something? Sometimes I feel like I should. <laughs> Between the Godzilla toys and all the Batman toys and stuff like this. 
you know, probably when I'm like 80 years old and if I'm living alone and nobody's home. Maybe I'll do an adventure with my toys again. <laughs> I know that's that's weird. Oh, one more thing. Over in this corner is my classic video game setup. So you can see I got my reel-to-reel. -reel and I've got all the uh, reel tapes. So I, that's only a portion of them. Right there, I have my old uh, Nintendo um, Cube. And then I have my Atari. And then I have some random controllers. And a little TV to play them all. Okay. Oh, and that's the cat bed. And he has Pax, our new cat, lives down here with me. <laughs> Most of the time. All right, folks. That's it. That is it. I am sorry for... If you lasted this long through the video, thank you so much for checking everything out. Um, and I really appreciate it. Um, again, if you have any comments, uh, if you actually like what you see here, I can do more stuff like this. I can show how I track and stuff like that. But as I'm rebuilding my uh, my YouTube channel, not a lot of subscribers yet, only a couple thousand. And uh, I've got a bunch of videos. I think I got a hundred and some videos up. I think I might have more. But if you guys have any suggestions for videos, like and subscribe down below. I would really appreciate it. Or if you even have some ideas on how I can um, move stuff. I would be happy to take those uh, requests. <laughs> Very cool. All right, folks, that's it. And I want to thank, uh, thank Johnny Lipstrom for the inspiration to do this video. It got me to do a couple of things. It got me uh, to uh, clean up everything and uh, really uh, go into some details for those that were interested. Uh, last but not least, this is um, a memorial for my father. Now, my father and I were not close. But there were times where we were. And uh, there is his urn, and, which we will actually be, uh, you know, burying at some point. And uh, his, his and my bowling trophies when we used to bowl together. I wish my father and I were closer. But um, all of this stuff is his memory. And despite where we ended up in the end, I miss him in so many ways. So there you go. That's it. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you all in the next video.